is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the May 20th, the Fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We need to make that one little two by four shift. It means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past. Well, right now, it's just past eight o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening in live, we would love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. And if you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Again, this is between 8 and 9 this morning. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tigers Den. Well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got all U.S. equity futures trading to the upside. Dow futures up 291. NASDAQ futures up 181. S&P 46. Russell's up 25 points. It's 1 to 4 tenths percent. If we take a look at what transpired overnight, Asian markets closed higher. The Shanghai was up 51 points, 1 to 6 tenths percent. The Nikkei 1 and 3 tenths, or 336 points. The Hang Seng, nearly 3 percent to the upside, 596 points. In Australia, the Australia 200 finished up 81 bucks. It's a little over 1%. The DAX is up nearly 2%, as is the FTSE as we speak right now. This is the playbook that we took a look at on Friday the 13th. Odds favor, as we just take a look at how uh, overseas markets have traded and closed, that the U.S. equity markets will trade higher. So that's the first take out there. Gold is flat. Silver's up three pennies. Platinum's off five bucks. Palladium's down two bucks. Copper's up a couple of pennies out here. Lights we crude up 18 cents. She's trading at 110.08. 30 year treasury is down uh, three ticks, trading at 140.16 out there. So, what does all this mean? Well, what all this really means, let's go switch over and take a look at our 120 minute time frame chart. I do not believe that the. Uh, so-called wave pattern has changed and the 120 minute chart is all we need to really focus on today. So this will be helpful to you whether you're listening at 109 in the afternoon or 809 in the morning. So here are our 120 minute time frame charts. We took a look at this yesterday. Now, the cool thing here, now each of these have Rhodes momentum indicator bottoms. And if we take a look at them, let's start with the Dow because uh, there's, there's really two of these charts, two of the four are gonna generate uh, significant messages for us. If the markets are going to rally, beyond what they've done this morning, well, then the Dow Equity Future contract is going to take out its TD9 count top. That took place at 6 o'clock this morning. And it was really right into where its counter trend resistance is, which is at the center of its bullish structured profile. When you close below a profile for two consecutive bars, then it's deemed, in essence, for the time frame to be bearish. And a counter trend move would find resistance. You have to identify those resistance spots. Well, it's really not the bottom of the profile it's really the center if it is a bullish structured profile we can see that is exactly what unfolded you can go back and listen to the archive yesterday and you'll see that's exactly what we said it's just the pattern i'm just simply the narrator of the pattern and the tools that many of you don't have on your chart so they're just going to assist you so now we know we've got a td9 count top on the two hour time frame that formed right at its counter trend resistance level so if there is going to be more rally then what we will see is we will see a close above that TD9 count top. And that high, that threshold level is 31,548. That's the one number you should have on your pad of paper. If at 1.10 in the afternoon, price is trading above that, 
likely where price is headed to or towards is it's is the 31,977 level. That's the top of the profile. The reason why I say headed to or towards is because we have to go take a look at where the daily oscillator and change line is as well because that is another potential level of resistance. So we'll do that here momentarily so that you get a feel for that. But really, the, the Dow equity future contract could be the key to answering what the intention of the markets are for the rest of the day. Right now, resistance is resistance. Until it fails, resistance is resistance. The second level of resistance is in the upper right-hand panel, and that is the NQ. And the NQ, now that was a bearish structured profile. So unlike, and when price closed below the bottom of its profile, the 120-minute time frame, didn't have the same type of it did not have the same profiles that the Dow did. So a totally different scenario. And that scenario says a counter trend rally would end in between the 11,999 level and the top of that profile. The top of that profile, you want to write this down in your pad of paper, is 12,063. So if we get a close above 12,063 on a two-hour time frame, Price will be above resistance, and that's going to suggest a further move higher. Now, the target could be 12,546. Again, I say could be because we have to take a look at other time frame charts and see what other resistance levels are out there. But nonetheless, this would be a bullish outcome. So it's really the upper right-hand panel, the NQ, the lower left-hand panel, the Dow, that we're going to get our signals from. If it's up to the ES Mini and the Russell 2000, they're saying, hey, guys, gals, get your act together because they have already broken out above resistance. They are trading above the top of their, well, I should say this, I, I, my apology. The Russell 2000 is trading above the top of its profile. The ES Mini is trading above the, is trading above the resistance level of its bullish structured profile. And once price closed above that, which it did at uh, four o'clock this morning, that was a signal that its intentions, this, the intentions of the ES Mini, are to continue to move higher and move higher into the 3994 level. Now, that's what the 120 minute time frame charts are telling us. Let's do this here. Let's switch over and let's do this one at a time. We don't have any callers. We don't have any requests this far, thus far. So let's just simply take this step by step. And by step by step, we'll go and take a look at multi time frame charts. Here are here's the NQ. And so in the NQ, you can see in the upper left hand panel. So the largest time frame that we have here is the daily time frame. You can see how price is trading right in to that resistance level, the asset and change line. So you've got two, count them, two resistance levels that the NQ is dealing with right now. The top of that 120 minute profile and its oscillator and change line. So this becomes easy peasy. If we see a close above both of those, in the case of the oscillator and change line, that's currently printed about 12.043. That's your signal for the move higher. Now, on the daily time frame chart for the NQ, that target could be 12.622. I'm not saying that price can't go lower. I'm just saying that based upon the way that we took a look at overseas markets, when we take a look at patterns, significant resistance levels that have failed on the 120 minute time frame, you should really prepare yourself for a higher close today. Now, I don't know if it's going to be higher than the highs that we've seen today. That's where we go back to those 120 minute time frame charts. We'll rely on that data to assist us there. We get back from this break. We'll continue taking. Let's see if there's anything else here in the NQ charts. And after that, we'll go take a look at the ES. We'll take a look at the Russell. We'll take a look at the Dow. And of course, anything that you would like. Just give us a call at 877 927 6648. Steve Rhodes coming to you live early in the morning on Friday, May the 20th. We'll be right back. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. If you are listening live, it's 818 in the morning. If you listen at 118, we're going to make this show as pertinent as we can for you uh, for the uh, day. We'll turn back to normal programming on Monday. We're looking at the uh, charts here for the NQ. If we look at the short-term intraday charts, 5-minute, 10-minute, 15-minute, you'll see topping patterns out there. You'll see either TD9 count tops, uh, uh, which on a 5-minute chart says supports at 12.033. Rose momentum indicator tops, uh, the 10-minute uh, that says it's supported at 12.028. 15 minutes says that it's supported 12.004. So this is your support levels on any move lower out there. If those areas crack, then we uh, switch back to, let's say, a 30-minute time frame chart. We would look at the 11.977 area out there. And all of those are really possibilities when we take a look again at the 120-minute chart, the daily time frame. We know that price is up at resistance. So coming, it's only 8.19. Um, you know, wouldn't be surprised to see the market uh, pull back um, this morning based upon what we're looking at right now inside of the charts for the NQ. Let's switch over from the NQ and let's go to the ES Mini out here and uh, see what its signals are for us. And this will take just a few moments here to populate. What I can share with you that I know is that the same intraday time frame charts, 5, 10, and 15 minute, have topping patterns out here. And so we just simply will look to those charts again for those support levels. And if those support levels fail, then we would switch over likely to the 30 minute time frame. So in the case of the uh, the case of the five minute chart, support is at 39.35. In the case of the 10 minute chart, it actually almost looks like it's trying to form a new profile, but I can't pick out the uh, bottom of it. So, oh, I can't, it's at 39.36. So that's a level of support, 39.33 on the 15-minute time frame, and actually below that would be 39.24. So those are, those are support levels on the ES Mini. Now, the ES Mini charts for the 120-minute time frame do not have that topping pattern, and price has not made its way to the oscillator and change line for the daily time frame, which currently, so this is your resistance level here today for the ES Mini, and that's at the 39.56 area. So if that's 1.20 in the afternoon and price is trading above that, Price is going to be headed for its most recent swing point, in the 4100 area. And if price can get above that, then it's going to move up to the 4168 level. Again, 
We're focused here on the markets moving higher at this stage versus bottom targets. And the reason that we're doing that is we had all the markets finish up nicely in Asia, in Australia, trading up nearly 2% in Europe right now. There is no reason to think that the U.S. markets won't do the same, especially because we have support that is held. And we can take a look at that when we switch to other panel charts out here. Nothing else that I see on the uh, ES mini charts to assist us. So let's go over to that Dow chart. Go take a look at it. And we'll finish off by looking at the Russell 2000. In fact, if there's no questions, we'll probably just simply continue to run through a number of different futures contracts out here just to see what kind of signal information they provide us with. But uh, checking my email right now, I see we've got... Uh, Got, uh, uh, looks like about two questions out there. So great. So uh, if we take a look at Dow Equity Future Contract, it's got a ways to go before it gets to its oscillator and change line. That's really the resistance level. Now, of course, there's two resistance levels. Right, the first one is that TD9 count top that we looked at on the 120 minute time frame. And again, just in case you're joining us now, the level to have on your pad of paper, the number to be paying attention to is 31,548. If prices trade about 31,548 and it's 122 in the afternoon, rally into the close likely. And at least price trying to target the 31,977 level. But before it gets there, it must deal with that red oscillator and change on the daily time frame. So the real resistance area here is about 31,797. Now, as price moves higher or lower, that number is going to change. So I can't give you that specific number at 122 in the afternoon. But as a guideline, I'd say if you're above 3,200, 32,000, I should say, that that would mean to me that price is above that red oscillator and change line and should see a further rally out here. Intraday-wise, 15-minute has a, a topping pattern. The five-minute's got a topping pattern out there. But really, it's going to be all about the 120-minute and that one number that you have to take a look at. Now, support to the downside inside the Dow, I would say, would be all the way down at 31,268 or thereabouts. That's the red 120-minute oscillator and change line level out there. There's other areas, such as 31,443, that's off the five-minute chart, 31,453, 10-minute chart, and as low as 31,365, coming from the 15-minute time frame chart. Uh, so that's the Dow Equity Future contract. Let's go take a look at the Russell. The Russell is the big winner out here. It is the strong dog. Whoops, let's actually put in the correct symbol. It's going to make it help. And as, we, as these charts pull up, now, I say... Stronger, well, for a number of different reasons. One, price yesterday in a daily time frame, look at this. Price didn't even get back to its swing point uh, from May the 12th out here yesterday. Didn't even get back to the swing point? Yeah, pretty sure that did not get back. Or maybe it tested the top and rejected it, uh, which is even a more beautiful thing. But price right now is just consolidating with inside its daily profile. But here on that 120 minute time frame, again, price is taking out resistance. That's the top of the profile. Now, in the Russell 2000, in all fairness out here, we can see that on the two-hour time frame, it's also to change on has changed colors. That typically has more meaning when you get an actual topping signal on a uh, on the time frame that you're working on. We don't really have we not don't really we don't have that as we speak. But nonetheless, if uh, if markets push back. The level of support that I'd be watching is that oscillator change line. That's currently about 1789. Since the top of the profile is 1787, and I know if price moves lower, uh, so too will the OUL number. So 1787 is the real number there. If price is trading above that, and it's 124 in the afternoon, odds favor that price is going to continue to move higher. Now, in the short-term time frames, much like the ES, the NQ, the YM, 5-minute, 10-minute, 15-minute, and even the 30-minute as we speak right now, have a potential, uh, the 30 minutes got a potential topping pattern six minutes before this bar closes. But it looks like you might get a Roachman to indicator top, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a support at about 1791 <coughs> and below that, 1776. So that's what's going on as we take a look at our equity futures charts. Now, there was somebody in the den that was trading the pound. And so I thought I would go ahead. And, uh, and, and offer an assist there and pull up our pound charts, our multi-time frame pound charts. And after we do this, we can go take a look at, I'll come back to these charts. We can take a look at gold, silver, lights recrude, natural gas, just kind of get a feel, the same feel out here. Now, I believe this individual, I believe they're looking to trade the pound to the upside. But I, but, but I don't know whether it was the upside or not. But let's go take a look at what the message of the pound is. And let's start with the larger time frame. In the larger time frame has this month, the month of May, being the completion of a TD9 count bottom. 
And that bottom looks to be completing a breakout support. And that support level is 1.236. So on the larger time frame, the message of the pound is that it wants to rally. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, it too formed a TD nine count bottom. It did that last week. This week, we've got a nice bullish engulfing candle. You know how we like to have bullish or bearish reversal candles confirm bottoms and tops? Well, we certainly have that as we speak right now. This suggests that what the pound is going to do is move up to the 127. So your bias in trading the pound should be to the upside based upon the monthly and the weekly charts. <coughs> Excuse me. I see on the weekly chart day to be proceeding to the downside that was completed last week and we've got an a to b proceeding to the downside that's completed on the daily time frame and price above its oscillator and change line odds favor over time price wants to go target that 1309 level now in the intraday charts we may have different signals like the six has got a td9 count on the top but also a td9 count on the bottom you ready Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Inn. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs. And join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablet as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we've got the 60-minute time frame chart up for the uh, Great British Pound. Uh, we've already established that you've got a nice bottoming pattern on the monthly, on the weekly, on the daily. All of these suggest that the pound wants to rally. If we look at a 60-minute time frame chart, we see a series of higher lows and higher highs. So everything here is just supporting, looking for trades to the upside. And if we take a look at the 60-minute time frame chart, it's got some nice signals when it topped. It topped with a TD9 count pattern. That was at uh, exactly 
12, uh, 12 o'clock. Uh, yeah, 12 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Price moves lower. And this morning it goes ahead at midnight, I should say. At midnight, it forms a TD nine count bottom. And now we've got price rallying. So the key level here of resistance for the Great British Pound to overcome to suggest that the rally is intact, it's really going to be two levels. The first level is 1.2504. That's the TD nine count breakdown level. But really, the level that it has to overcome is the 12 noon high from yesterday. And that's at 1.2524 out there. So that's what's going on inside the uh, Great British Pound. We do have some questions that have come in. So let's get to those questions. We'll switch over to our multi time frame chart out here. There we go. And the first question coming in from Hector and Patty. And Hector and Patty, their question goes like this Hi, early bird Steve O. Back at you. Happy. Foster, Frosty Foster's Friday. You got it. There's nothing wrong with a good Foster's, that's for sure. Question is, CME, is it ready to nibble here for a mid to long-term positive bull run? Have a great weekend. Enjoy the PGA Championship. Most definitely I will. So we take a look at the CME out here, Hector and Patty. The monthly chart has a road's momentum indicator top and prices below the bottom of its monthly profile. So over time, the current message is that it may want to go tackle its breakout level of 149.30. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, it has formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. And as we speak right now, I don't know where today's close will be, but if today's close is below 191.61, that will be a close below its breakout level of support on the weekly time frame. When you close below one breakout level, you typically go to the next breakout level. I don't have that here on the weekly uh, right now, so I, instead I, what I would do is take a look at that monthly time frame at the 149.30. If, if you're looking for some type of rally, we'd want to see some type of bottom pattern on the daily time frame at least. And as we open up this chart, what do we have out here? Well, the only thing that we do have is a potential of a wave number seven pattern out there. That needs a higher low today. But other than that, I don't have a signal. If the CME did bounce, then its resistance level would be 195.97. But the daily time frame does not have a bottom signal. So no, I don't believe it's a, I don't think that would be a good time to nibble here, especially based upon the patterns, Patty and, uh, and Hector that we looked at for the uh, monthly and the uh, weekly time frame. Now, intraday wise, we did see a nice 15 minute Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Price ran right in resistance, 190.95. So on the day, if price closed above 190.95, that suggests a further rally. You got a TD9 count top as we came to the close yesterday in the 30 minute. So if you take out today, yesterday's high, that high, by the way, is 191.36. You should see a rally to 195.13. Nothing on the 65 minute chart. TD9 count bottom on the 130. So if you get that uh, TD9 count top to fail on the 30 minute chart the 130 says hey i'd like to make a move to the 202 23 area no uh, uh 199.31 level out there so i wanted to make sure that we covered both what it's doing on the play-by-play -play, the up to the minute even though the markets aren't open but as they closed yesterday in the short term time frames versus what the longer term time frames and and hector and patty's question was can they nibble on this for a mid to long term positive bull run and so you can understand the answer there is no, because we don't have those signals. But then if, in fact, the CME trades higher today, which it likely will or should out there, and if it especially takes out that TD9 count top on the 30-minute time frame, I don't want somebody to look at the charts and say, man, Steve-O got that totally wrong. Again, it's to the midterm. If you're going to trade it intraday, well, you kind of have your parameters there. So I hope that helps you out, Patty and Hector. Thanks so much for the early rise. Uh, they are also in uh, California out there. So that is truly the early bird. Nicholas writes in, he wants to take a look at the SMHs. So let me get the SMHs fired up here. And we'll read Nicholas's question. And his question begins like this. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Nicholas. Uh, you look very refreshed this morning. Yeah, pretty decent night's sleep. Although I was up uh, late for hockey again. Uh, St. Louis, uh, so they tied up that series. And how about the Florida series out there? With just seconds to go, Tampa pulling it out. Uh, the Bolts, man, uh, Two on the road. Now, you know, you're playing in Florida, so you've got fans in, you know, both uh, in any event out there. They, they certainly should be able to move on, uh, you would think. But we'll see Sunday. And tickets, it's amazing to me. So, like gas, if I buy my the gas down here is uh, pretty close to six bucks. Is it six bucks a gallon already? Pretty close. I think it's five or 
Yeah, I, I can't. It's it's about fifty to eighty cents cheaper up in Tampa. It's uh, I go I go to Naples really often, and it's always fifty to seventy cents um, less in Naples versus where I'm at. And where I'm gassing up, it's pretty much uh, the gas stations mostly are in Boca out there. And uh, so it, this area's got a bunch of money, but so too does that area. But the ticket prices, because uh, I was considering driving up on Sunday. It's an afternoon game. I was considering driving up, uh, catching up with my uh, with one of my kids. And uh, ticket prices in Tampa were like twice as much as they are down here in uh, South Florida. Go figure out there. Uh, nosebleed seats, when I looked at them last, were like about 300 bucks which I won't sit in the nosebleed seats because I don't want my nose to bleed, but just kind of just saying out there. In any event, let's get to Nicholas's question, right? He said, would you please go over the SMH? He's in the, uh, he's long, he's in the SOXL. Wonder what the resistance levels are. Thanks, have a great weekend. You too. So the SMH, as we can see, that this formed a nice road momentum indicator top on the monthly time frame, and price is pulled back to support. So, Nick, the real key price level that you need to see price day above, 216.14. If price closes below that, suggests we have lower price. If we look at a weekly time frame chart, we do have wave number seven that looks like it's going to complete this week. Now, this suggests, Nick, that price may make a run for the 246.26 level. 246.26 is going to be resistance. Let me just see in the pre-market here, where is the SMH trading? 233 was the last trade that fired off. So just a couple bucks above where we're at. Daily time frame. So, by the way, the weekly time frame also has a three drive to a bottom pattern out here. So it's got a, and the, the first drive is right here the week of January 28th, the second drive March 18th, the third drive actually came to a, uh, a head the week of May 6th, and you got the bullish reversal candle last week. That's how you like to see a three drive, or any pattern quite frankly confirmed out there. So you got that nice uh, bullish hammer candle. So yeah, price over time should make a move to 246.26. So on the daily time frame though, I don't really have a bottoming pattern. Perhaps I could find if I, I don't even, I really don't have, I don't, I, I can see there's no way that that is a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern out here. But nonetheless, maybe the daily's taking its marching orders from that weekly chart. But Nicholas, your resistance level here on the daily, you're trading at 233 in the pre-market, 237.60 is the top of that profile. So um, the, the weekly says it wants to get moving, but the daily hasn't given us the, uh, you know, all ahead signal out there if price did close above 237.60 then we'd say okay this is one of those patterns or one of these time frames where we don't have one of the patterns that stevie likes to look at but it still did bottom because it was able to take out resistance so you wanted support and resistance levels support 218.42 resistance 237.60 for the day steve roach with tfnn we'll be right back If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? 
If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. It's 8.42 in the morning, and uh, good morning, everybody. you got the Dow Futures up 240, NASDAQ's up 159, S&P's up 38, Russell up 20 points out there. Gold is flat, trade out at 1842, silver's off 10 cents. 2180 is the print there. Light sweet crude is uh, flat, trade out at 109.84. Uh, so what does all that mean? Let's go take a look at my nine-panel market update chart out here just so you can get a feel. If we take a look at the ES Mini, what the ES Mini did yesterday was it got down within one tick of the low from May the 12th. Price closed back above the uh, bottom of its daily profile, so support held, support being at 38.99. Where is price likely to target? Well, I'd say the center of that profile would be a place, 39.89. Of course, we took a look at the daily oscillator and change line, and that's important to uh, pay attention. So I won't go back and review that. Uh, just watch, uh, rewind the archive of this if you're looking for that number. If we take a look at spot volatility, it is below the uh, Bollinger Band reading, the upper Bollinger Band reading at 30. Uh, 70, and so price may be targeting its 50-day expense moving average at 27.38. If we take a look at the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ doing the same thing as the ES Mini, getting close to the bottom of that May 12 swing point, closing back above the bottom of its daily profile, support held. That support level is 11.875. Resistance here we can see has been the center of that bearish structured profile, so a move higher should find resistance at 12.622. The U.S. dollar index closed below the bottom of its daily profile. That level is 103.18. A second consecutive close today would suggest lower price. Now, lower price, price is trading right into an area of support. That's at 102.86. We're at 102.95. This is trading into a bullish structured weekly profile. So if price closed below 102.86, that would then signal a move back to the 102.13 level. But price is sitting at a weekly level of support. Goldilocks trading above support. Support is at 1806.80. The resistance level, it's a bearish structured profile, is in between 1861 and 1872. And 1873 happens to be the bottom of the weekly profile. So your real stiff resistance here in Goldilocks is going to be in that 1873 level. In the case of silver, it's trading above the center of its bullish structured profile. Whenever you get above the center of a bullish structured profile, buyers should have it's not a guarantee, but it is a high probability that buyers should be able to push price up to resistance. And that resistance is sitting at 22.76. Lights we crude pulled back yesterday, tested, rejected support. Old resistance, which was the top of its daily profile, which has now become support. That's 104.44. But price is really trading in between trendline support and trendline resistance. Trendline resistance today is about the 112.80-ish area out there. Natural gas, which has a, I can't recall, I think it's a Rhodes momentum indicator top that formed on May the 6th. But price is above the uh, top of its profile out there. So its signal is really kind of muted or neutral. Uh, so to speak, that does not mean that price can't pull back to test support, which would be $7.63. The 30-year Treasury is just simply consolidating with inside its daily profile. It has been doing that all week long. 
So it's support and resistance. Support is at 138 and 13 30 seconds. Resistance is 141 and 6 30 seconds out there. So that kind of covers the general markets and what they are doing out there. There was some chatter inside the Tiger's Den about John Deere. And John Deere is uh, trading lower this morning. It's trading out at 343. So let's go take a look at the John Deere charts and get a feel for what it's trading into, if it is trading into anything at all. And for that, We'll just simply go to the uh, we'll go to the multi time frame charts. So on a monthly basis, John Deere last month formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Price been trading below its green oscillator and change line. That suggests that price might make its way back to 289.15. 289.15 is a top of the monthly profile. Again, in the pre market, it's trading about 342 right now. 342 is going to take the weekly chart as a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. So. If you're asking, uh, John Deere trading lower was that in the was was that in the cards so to speak? Well, it wasn't in the cards, the tarot cards. It was in the charts, topping pattern on the weekly, Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Now price is going to take out the bottom or appears that it will take out the bottom of its weekly profile. We will not know until the end of the trading session, but it is trading below 349. That would suggest that price might move back to 278. We're trading at 343 now. 349 could hold. So you'll want to watch that. No bottoming pattern, but price, that's a level of support. Daily time frame shows it's a bullish structured profile. And a close day below 358.71 is going to suggest lower price. In fact, what it could do, let me just do this off, off screen here. I just want to see what the volume is in Deer. It may already have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. So the volume for the B point would be that I would have used. There's, there's really a couple you can use. Uh, April 25th had 4.4 million shares, and that was passed with, no, just light volume. Well, maybe today it's going to get the volume for the A to B equals CD to the downside. By the way, if it, the A to B, if it does get it confirmed, A to B equals CD to the downside, to give you what that price projection is, it would get you down to 323. Now, wait a minute. Where's the trade in the market? Give me a second here. Which screen am I on? You're on the white screens. Uh, it is trading at 342. Okay, so that's still twenty dollars lower out there. Uh, so with regard to John Deere, was it in? Was and the daily's got a road momentum indicator top. So the mere fact that it's trading lower, not really a gigantic surprise out there. The question is, will it find support at 349 today? And if it does not, then that's a setup that John Deere wants to continue to move lower out there. And I would say that the uh, target, uh, at least the initial target of 323 is likely its uh, next stop. That would also take you back to its February 24th swing point low that has volume of about 3.6 million. And that's between the area of 338 to 348 out there. Um, what did we not take a look at out here in detail? Let me just see if there's any questions that have come in. I don't think there are. I don't think there's any requests inside the Tiger's Den. Although you could put in a request out there, and I would be happy to get to it. Um, so in the meantime, let's go take a look. Let's switch over. Let's see what we want to take a look at. Let's take a look at. Let's go take a look at Goldilocks out here. So GC, got, we're still on the June contract. Let's pull up our, our daily and our intraday time period charts out here. See what kind of signal information they are providing to us. Uh, gold, again, we talked about this earlier, held support. That was the bottom of its daily profile out there. Why is this taking so long to populate? There we go. Come on. There we go. So on a daily basis here, we can see that gold is trading above its oscillator and change line. That's currently printed 1832, and I'm referring to the daily time frame out here. So this suggests a run at 1861, 1872 level. 1852 is the TD nine count breakdown resistance area. So if price can clear that 1852, if it's trading above 1852 at 149 in the afternoon, odds favor it's making that run for the 1861, 1872 area. No signal coming from the 120. 60 minute has really two topping patterns. It has a TD9 count top. Let's open this up. And it has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Now, all that that has led to is a sideways consolidation out here. So really not too bad in support is held, which is at 1838.70 out there. Um, TD9 count top on the 30-minute chart. Price consolidating with inside the 30-minute profile, so holding up pretty well. 1837.20 is a key level of support. That's a TD9 count breakout area for its 30-minute time frame. So I don't really see anything else out here worth reporting on. But what we should do, it would be fair to me, is how is the, what's the most important chart for gold? 
And now those of you that listen to me or watch my show out here, you already know what the answer is. You know what I'm going to show, what I'm going to pull up on the screen, right? The most important chart for gold is how is it trading in all of the major currencies. Do we have buyers in Goldilocks this morning? Well, we're higher in terms of U.S. dollars. We're higher in terms of yen. We're higher in terms of euros. We're higher in terms of pounds. So gold should be able to rally today. Steve Rhodes with TF and Ed. We'll be right back. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks, and thanks so much for listening early. If you were the early bird, it's 8.54 in the morning. Of course, you were listening to the Archive Show. Thanks so much for doing that as well. Right now at 8.54, we've got U.S. equity futures trading the upside. Dow's up 200 points. NASDAQ's up 134. Russell is up 17. The E-mini is up 32 points. Over in Asia last night, all markets closed higher. One and six tenths to three percent to the upside. A little over one percent in Australia. European markets are up one and a half, one seven tenths percent to the upside. Odds favor that today will be a up close in the U.S. markets. Gold right now 
basically flat at 1841. We just covered it. Gold should be able to rally. Uh, silver is off uh, 14 cents, trading at 2177. Again, the charts that are most important today are the, in my opinion, are the 120 minute time frame charts. This is where you're going to get your most important signals. And the most important signals will come from the Dow, that is the YM. And the level to be watching there to the upside is going to be 31,548. To the downside, it would be 31,257 or so. The reason I say or so, because that number is going to change. That's its oscillator and change line for the 120 minute time frame. Because this has a TD9 count top, price could make its way back to its breakout level of support of 39.94. I doubt it, but it could. But if price closes above or is trading about 31,548, certainly at, uh, so this is a two hour time frame, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, it's only five minutes to nine. You'll watch for that. Then you got 10, 12, two, which will be the end of this show if you're listening to the archive version. If price is trading about 31,548, we rally into the close. The second chart to pay attention to is gonna be the upper right-hand panel, that's the NQ. Price is traded right into resistance of its bearish structured profile. That number up there is 12,063. If price is trading above that, then we should see a further rally in all of the equity future contracts. So folks, thanks again for joining me on Fantastic Friday. I want everybody to have a wonderful weekend out there. Be safe, get lots of sun if it's in the area and uh, join us again on Monday. We'll be back at the normal programming time. If you're listening live, Tommy O'Brien is up next with the morning market kickoff. And of course, of the archive show, it's your favorite polar bear, David White. Have a fantastic Friday, folks. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. And, and dot com.